everyone welcome back to the library of parthos my name is sarah and whew, this book unexpected absolutely loved it <laughs> um unexpected first of all that i actually read it and second of all that i loved it um so as i'm sure you're aware by now i'm horrible at sticking to my tbr like really really bad um so i got the book the Luminaries by Susan Dennard in an owl crate box. And I, at the same time, just saw that it was like a, a, a new release on Goodreads. So I was like, oh, I should, like this just came out, I should definitely read this now. And I could not put it down. I need book two now, <laughs> please. Um, and I, I think that there's a book two, there, there has to be a book two. I have so many unanswered questions at the end. So I picked up this book thinking, as I usually do, I'll read a little bit here, a little bit there, maybe take me a week to finish it, film a video, and here we go. Um, no, this was a book like I'm going to forego all of my adult responsibilities and just read this book. And that's exactly what I did. So super behind in life, <laughs> but I got it done. <laughs> all right, so I'll do a quick summary um, of the story and then get into spoilers. And of course, if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it, um, and if you want to avoid the spoilers, then feel free to skip to the end of the video um, so nothing's ruined. Now, when I looked at this book on Goodreads, it did say um, Luminaries and then in parentheses, you know, number one. So I'm really hopeful for a second book. Kind of hate that I read it as soon as it came out because that means I have to wait, you know, that much longer. <laughs> But anyway, The Luminaries is a story of a small town, Hemlock Falls, um, that is pretty much solely there to protect people from the spirit in the forest. Um, so the Luminaries are a group of hunters. Um, each clan is named for a day of the week, and they all have like their own um, specialty area that they contribute to. For example, um, the Wednesday clan are responsible for like just all of the things that keep the town functioning. So they are the people who set up like the diner and the coffee shop and the, the stores. Um, the Mondays have, I, I guess it's more like um, they're responsible for like knowledge because <laughs> they have the library, the hospital, they have like a scientific lab where they study all of these creatures that are brought in. So each clan um, contributes to the town operating, but they also hunt on their specified day of the week. Um, so on Wednesdays, the Wednesday clan hunters will go into the forest and they will um, take down nightmares. So there is a spirit in the forest. It's been there for, I think, like 90 to 100 years. Um, and when the spirit sleeps at night, the spirit has nightmares. And these nightmares are actual nightmare-ish creatures that come to life. And the hunters need to go out and kill them because they will kill the townspeople or nons, as they're called, which are just people outside of the town. Um, and so this, this story is about a a teenager named Winnie Wednesday. Winnie Wednesday's family, um, not her entire clan, just her, her mother, and her brother have been cast out of society, out of the Hemlock Falls, because her father um, was a secret spy for the Dianas. The Dianas are a group of witches that kind of try to steal power from the spirit and use it for their own means. Um, and so the fact that he made it into Hemlock Falls to spy on the luminaries is a big deal because every outsider is vetted. So they're like shamed. Um, no one will talk to them. Um, Winnie's mom used to be the lead hunter. She's lost that job and now just works like a double shift at the diner. Um, her brother's just basically a coffee boy for the one of the council members. Um, Winnie doesn't have any chance of becoming a hunter, so it's like really changed their livelihood. So where the story starts, um, Winnie is turning 16, I believe. Yes, yeah, 16. It's her 16th birthday, which means that it's time for her to take the hunter trials. At the hunter trials, there are three different trials, and um, the prospective hunters take these trials, and if they pass, they can join their clan. Um, on their specified night. So Winnie um, 
finds out that she can in fact take the trial even though she has been outcast and so she is trying to get through this hunter trial and um bring her family honor <laughs> so that's essentially the summary of the story i went on a little bit long there but it's mostly just because i'm excited <laughs> um i really thought this was a cool idea for the story I love that each of the clans were named after a day of the week and that's their specified day to hunt. Um, now they're not all related, like some of the, I, I don't know how it's decided who joins what clan, um, but some of the outsiders are, you know, they say like, this is actually their last name, but they're a Wednesday now. Winnie is like obsessed with the Nightmare Compendium, the book that has all of the nightmares in, and so she draws them and like basically has the Nightmare Compendium memorized. Um, which is a really cool detail because it it pops up multiple times throughout the story. Um, I love Winnie has like these little little quirks, I guess. Um, when she gets really nervous, she'll like her her she'll like ch click her teeth, chatter her teeth. I don't remember exactly how it was worded, um, but it like you can kind of. Um, the author will kind of include details to say like when he was trying really hard not to chatter her teeth or whatever and i think that's just like a really cute detail um i i don't know why um this deep i thought this was like a cool element of the story because it's not like a novel thing um but the the detail to like the character's clothing was used to really highlight the fact that like winnie was on the outskirts of society her family was struggling because it was a single income from her mom she lost her job that paid well and now had this like just really low paying job and so like i just thought it was um a really way a really cool way to contrast the uh, Winnie's situation with some of the other kids that she's interacting with and like I said it's not like a novel thing it's like a pretty normal thing to do but for whatever reason in this story I absolutely loved it um, and there's another character Jay Friday used to be Winnie's best friend but when she got cast out she lost all of her friends um, now she's working with him again because he's helping to train her but like every time he like comes into the picture, it's like he does not look good. Like his clothes are ugly, but everyone still fawns over him. Like it really shows the contrast between Winnie's situation and some of the other kids that she's interacting with. And for example, um, two of her friends, they're twins, have a birthday party and Winnie doesn't have anything super nice to wear. So she borrows from a friend and it doesn't fit her right. Another quirk that Winnie has is she, when she's kind of feeling nervous or like, especially in the forest, she'll start like quoting the Nightmare Compendium. So for example, when she is, um, when she decides to do the first trial, they turn her away, but she's like, I'm gonna do it anyway. Nobody said I couldn't. So she goes into another part of the forest, unsupervised, no hunters nearby, very dangerous, and, um, hears like this noise and she just starts like reciting facts from the nightmare compendium to try to figure it out um and it's almost like a nervous tick for her i think um but she ends up getting attacked by a banshee super terrifying and she survives but she doesn't kill it and that's how you uh pass the first trial is by killing a nightmare on your own um she later finds the banshees just its head on the side of the road and as she's carrying it back because she knows it needs to be taken to the lab for analysis um a group of other kids who were doing the trial drive by and just assume that she killed the banshee so now she's living this lie because she's technically passed the first trial she can't really take credit for it um her family starts getting all of this like recognition again so they're invited to clan dinners there her brother gets a promotion like all of these really great things are happening because she passed the first trial um and now she's just ridden with guilt because she took credit for something that didn't happen so winnie discovers throughout all of her time in the forest during these trials that there is an, a nightmare that's not in the compendium she ends up calling it the whisperer because it makes this really like low rattly whispering sound i forget exactly how she describes it like a tornado going through a, a lawnmower or something like that the images kind of like break apart and reshape kind of like a kaleidoscope and this like black hole type creature 
kills all of the nightmares in its path, just like rips them to shreds. So that's what happened to the Banshee. Um, but Winnie is the only one who has actually seen this nightmare. And um, there are a handful of people who believe her. However, um, they don't have enough proof for the council and everyone else to believe them. So there's not much they can do at this point. There's also a werewolf that has been spotted. And werewolves are rare because most of the nightmares disappear with like the morning, kind of like in Minecraft. <laughs> they just kind of go away. They might respawn, um, but as long as they're killed by the hunters, for the most part, they new ones respawn or new ones spawn in the morning. However, werewolves are called daywalkers, so just like a typical werewolf, they go back to being a person during the day, and at night they're back to being a werewolf. I don't know if this is too much of a spoiler. Okay, I'm just gonna say, like, potentially major spoilers from here on out. So, like, if you were sticking with it because you were like, oh, it doesn't really matter, but you're like, mm, I really don't want the end of the book to be to be spoiled, skip on through. Um, okay, so I think Jay's the werewolf, and the author kind of heavily hints at this in the last few chapters, or the last, like, chapter, I think. Um, so he's like tired all the time. His eyes are always red. He smells like weed a lot. I don't know what the weed has to do with it. Winnie on her last trial is fighting all of these nightmares. She's like trapped at a lake or like right by a waterfall by the whisperer. She jumps over the waterfall and then, um, she is dragged out of the water. She, uh, like glimpses white fur. She smells the same scent that Jay smells like. It's lime and bergamot, I think. Um, and it's mentioned multiple times that that's what he smelled like. And now she smells it. And then she finds out she was bitten by a werewolf when she goes to the hospital, um, as the werewolf was like dragging her out or whatever. Um, so I'm pretty sure he's the werewolf. And that's why, this is why I need a second book because in the last, like I was reading, there were like 20 pages left and I was right when she started her last trial and I was like, there is no way I'm gonna get all the closure I need. Um, so heavily hints that Jay is a werewolf. They have the slowest of slow burns. I mean, it's, it's good, don't get me wrong, but like we got nothing yet. It's very obvious that Jay likes Winnie and she's still kind of like fighting with the whole like he was my best friend and then he just ignored me for four years and he says he has his own stuff going on. Could it be werewolf stuff? I don't know. Um, and now he's like helping her again, like going way out of his way to help her and she's realizing like, okay, I he was my first crush. Like I really do like this guy and um, that's kind of where it ends. In the last like few pages of the book, Winnie finds this code that her dad had left her and it says, I was framed. So was he really spying for the Dianas? I don't know. Um, and that is how the story ends, like major cliffhangers. So I need book two. So Susan Dennard, if you are listening, please can we expedite the process because I cannot handle <laughs> like a year plus of waiting to find out what happens with Winnie and Jay and her dad and the werewolf and the whisperer and there's just so many questions. So if you couldn't tell, I really enjoyed this book. I am glad I deviated from my TBR to check this one out and I highly recommend that you read it too. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Yeah.